So I recently put out the compression video on the official Renoise channel and in a lot of ways it's an update to the video I did on compression on this channel several years ago. And one of the reasons it really needed a good update was because the attack and release section it was completely incorrect. You can see why when you search for how attack and release work in compressors because a lot of the results you'll get will say the same thing which is that when the waveform breaches the threshold, then attack is invoked. And the timing of that is the amount of time it takes to get up to full compression, and as long as the waveform stays above the threshold, it will be at full compression, and this will only change when the waveform comes below the threshold again, and then release will be invoked. This is frankly complete bollocks. It's certainly not how it works for the Renoise compressors, and so I had to do far more research and testing, uh, rendering out the waveforms in Renoise to verify exactly what was going on. And when looking into it more, one of the most common things that I found cropping up was the phrase that the attack and release timings are actually roughly two thirds of the time that it takes for full compression to come into place. Now, I'm not saying that no compressors actually work like this. Maybe some analog ones do, but based on a lot of forum results and Reddit posts, there was a lot of people complaining that this is not how it works for digital actual software compressors. And again, this is not how the Renoise compressors work at all. Now, some of the responses I found, and one article as well, we're seeing something more interesting, which is that while the uh, waveform is above the threshold, attack and release are constantly at play. And although it wasn't said explicitly, it was basically that attack is invoked when the volume is rising and release is invoked when the volume is falling. Uh, this seemed to generally be the case uh, when I was rendering out the waveforms, as long as the attack and release timings were very low. When they started to creep up in time, then that started to become less and less true, and actually there seems to be something else at play. I could never figure out what it was though. It was always mysterious and I needed some other factor or way to test things to understand what was really going on. And thankfully, the audio compression visualizer, which I'd been using for a month or so, it comes with a very nice option to look at the code so that you can see precisely what's happening. I showed this in the official Renoise video, but didn't go into any detail. Uh, we can do that now. Most of the code is just setting things up and drawing the waveforms. But all the compression takes place in the compress function. Initially, things are set up. We take the values here and make them available to the code. The main action takes place in the for loop, which is going through the waveform step by step and applying compression to it. And the two main things you need to pay attention to are the two variables, gr and env. gr is gain reduction. This is the intended full amount of compression as applied to the input volume coming from the waveform. It's easier to just think of it as the intended full compression. This is calculated each time the loop is gone through. Unlike env, which is added to and retained each time the loop is executed. And what this is, is the previous compressed volume coming from the previous execution of the loop. Now the plus and equals means that the previous version is added to with this calculation. The GR, the intended full amount of compression, minus the previous amount of compressed volume, multiplied by, and this is an if statement, if GR is less than env, then depending on the answer, use the release coefficient or the attack coefficient. And what this is, is basically a roundabout way of saying that my suspicions about some sort of holdover effect rather than uh, just purely going up in volume invoking attack and reduction volume invoking release 
there is some other factor that was taking place, and it's this, it's the end value. What this was doing is interacting with the intended amount of compression and ensuring there's sort of some slowdown effect, depending on what the release and attack timings are. Now, I can't guarantee that this is exactly how the Renoise compressors work. But based on the testing and the rendering I was doing, and I did a lot of it, this is very, very close. There may be some differences, such as the attack and release coefficients being different. I know that the release is more relaxed than the attack. Whether it's a ratio of 1, 2, 3, I'm not sure. But certainly based on everything that I looked at, this is pretty much it. This is how the Renoise compressors operate. 